Hi, Jerry. Uh, this is, of course, Jerry uh, Carey joining us from Kirsten. Jerry, how are you doing? Uh, should I say fine? Oh, I'm trying to be fine. Uh, I'm just, we are just coping to see that we live every day to, to find an alternative means to escape these um, invasions. And every day by day is becoming more scary. And um, the explosion and the vibration is terrible now. And uh, before it was better, but now uh, it's getting out of hand. And this is the right time for the Nigerian government need to hurt. Because I don't want it to be a situation like uh, the Sumi um, resident that was stuck. This is how it started, before the whole building was brought down. So this is the right time for the government to liaise with these people and uh, ev evacuate us out from this city. It's very, very terrible now. You can't sleep and the bombing is like constant and you, you feel the vibrations. And this uh, day, we don't know what happened. If it will collapse or what next? So we just wish uh, the uh, Nigerian government take action now. This is the right time for them to act. All right, um, Jerry, hold the thought just a, a little a bit about what's been happening uh, so far. The, the invasion has caused a mass exodus of civilians, including thousands of international students from Africa, Asia, and the Middle East. Uh, Ukraine uh, was home to over 76,000 foreign students, according to government data from 2020. Nearly a quarter of the students were from Africa, with the largest numbers coming from Nigeria, Morocco, and Egypt. Now, while hundreds of Nigerians have now been evacuated out of the country. Many, and this is like Jerry, who's joined us, are still waiting for help. Uh, he is in the city of Kherson, which is strategically located in southern Ukraine. The city was first significant uh, uh, urban center to fall since Russia invaded Ukraine, uh, February 24. Um, Jerry, I mean, as one of the Nigerian students, I know that the last time we spoke, uh, we spoke to you, and we also spoke to other students in in Sumi, and you've heard about them uh, how they've left. I know that you're hoping there will be a humanitarian corridor in Kherson as quickly as possible, but uh, while you've been there, the communication from the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, um, what would you say? Uh, what have they said and, you know, what are you hearing uh, with regards to how you can leave Kherson? Okay, now, uh, at this point, we are taking our safety to our end. So, because now, nothing from our Nigerian government. We've not heard anything from them. So, we have to speak to the, maj the major in the um, person. And he said that since we are aware that the city has been captured, that the place is very, very dangerous, unless the government official will help us evacuate, that we cannot do that on our own. So, uh, there's some implementations he's trying to, he's trying to put in place. But I'm not sure that will come soon. And these people are not willing to cease fire. Because the mayor himself is not in Kesson, because Kesson has been taken over. He's, 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 he's talking to us from another city. So now they are looking for a way to come into the city, but they cannot come in, in peace. They need to yeah. come in in violence, because Russians are already here. So, but other uh, nationalities like Nigerians, we can come here in peace, talk to these people and evacuate your own people, and then everybody will, will be fine. But for us to apply the road now is very dangerous for us. So staying, but, uh, staying here on the ground is not still safe for us as well. But, uh, Jerry, you do know that um, for those who have evacuated, um, the, the rule uh, from the Minister of uh, Foreign Affairs, the advice has been to get to the border first. Um, is that possible for you? to get to one of four borders of Poland or of Hungary or of Romania? Is that a possibility at all? It is not possible. 100% not possible for us because um, we stay at the southern part and the only border we share, we share border with Crimea, which is um, a territory to Russians. So before we could cross, we need to pass through, um, uh, What's it called? Uh, that Mariupol, uh, what's it called? Mariupol Nikolai is in uh, is 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 um, heavily attacked now. We need to pass through those routes to get to uh, the border. So it's a, it's not a, it's not a two hours journey. It's not a, it's not a ten hours journey. It's just like eighteen hours journey. And you know this road has been has been broken. The bridge has been broken. And the only way is to pass through where the Russian troops are, according to the the previous map released yesterday. Uh, this, they are all, the, the place they are is only safe because the, the road is still good for us to fly. But the, the, the aspect of us going to, to Poland border 
Romania or Hungary border is not is not um, possible for us unless the government will help us make that possible. I know that when you spoke to us earlier today, Jerry, you, you talked about, um, you know, the, the Russians using civilians as, um, I think you said, their media power. What exactly did you mean? Okay, uh, what I mean by that is this, you know, uh, the Ukrainian open hands for foreigners to come in and help them fight this war. So before we were safe, we, we, uh, we were like able to come out and be open. But now, since the civilians have been attacking Russians, so the, the safety of the foreigners is 0% now. So they might because mistake you for mercenaries. Yes, yes, you get that, right? So they, they, they attack you from distance because they don't know who are you, they don't know who you are, they don't know what you're about to do. So for them to safeguard their territory, once they see up, um, approaching um, vehicles or foreigners, they have to take action. So it's not safe for us because they don't know who is fighting for the Ukrainians and who is not fighting for the Ukrainians. Jerry, how are you doing with supplies? I know that you've been there many days and I can understand, you know, the angst in your voice. Um, you're anxious, you're afraid. You and the other Nigerians who are there with you, and we do understand, you know, what you're going through. But how have you been doing with supplies, with food, with water, okay. with electricity and so on? Okay, for... For that, um, it was better. It was better than some, like some days ago, it was better where we still have supplies. But since the Russian invasion, they, they are trying to um, fake it to the world that they are helping the civilians by bringing their own foodstuff. And um, the people of um, Keston don't want to accept that. Since that was rejected and their media was not allowed to film the event, so they said, okay, the only solution is for them to block all supplies, medicals as well, to come into the city. Now, for us to have supply now is there's, it's not possible because the little one we have is uh, the one we got before last week. But since the, the admission was not successful, they have to block the, end, the border from allowing the supplies to come in. Now, for the electricity, it go, electricity is somehow good, but the internet, once uh, they blow it off, they go fix it, because we need to talk to our loved ones. And so, so many cities, so many of my colleagues now, I can't reach them. So, because I just like, for the other um, medias I've been talking to, to help them, when they get to me, they talk about my colleagues. I said, I can't even get some of them online because their internet is not working and their supply are running out. We have been assisted by Maritime Union, but now they can't do anything. If this one finish, we are left with nothing. So the best option is for us to leave this place. Pretty dire situation you're in, Jerry. Uh, we're hoping that authorities are listening and somehow you get the help that you need, especially to get out of Kherson. Thank you for speaking with us and as much as possible, do stay safe. Thank you very much.